Yo, what's up guys? As you can see by the title, we're here to talk about something pretty cool. So, there's some homies in Texas that want to throw on an event every year from here on out. Um, hopefully Corona doesn't affect this so we can actually get a, you know, a running start here. Even though it's kind of short notice, but next year will be even better and the year after that should be even better if this happens. So it's going to be in Austin, Texas. We're going to have Mexico nights, all the nights over there, Friday and Saturday night, I guess. It's just really, and then we're going to try and run out the, uh, whatever road course is nearby. Um, Harris Hill Racetrack is the name. Um, this is the Facebook page. I'm going to drop the link down below. So if you live in Texas or anywhere near Texas or feel like traveling to Texas in October, Austin, I think it's the 23rd to the 25th of October. Um, see if you can make it. It'd be super dope. We're going to try, try and have the fastest cars, Mark 7, MQB, um, cars in Texas and surrounding areas down there for this event. Uh, plenty of drag racing, plenty of roll racing, obviously a road course meets. Um, meet a lot of people, see a lot of cars, get some ideas of your car, just watch some racing. Um, be pretty dope. I think this is like a super, super, super awesome idea. I go to all these big events. I go to street car takeover and these, you know, small tire, big tire events and TX2K, all these things. And there's barely ever any Euros. Like, don't get me wrong. I love all cars. Anything fast, anything cool. Like, I'm all about it. But obviously, Euros are my favorite. So it'd be super cool to have like huge amount of people out there and um just take over the highways so, like imagine just like 40 golfs rolling down the highway like it just sounds awesome it sounds awesome <laughs> and then i don't know how many people would actually sign up for the road course but that's what my car is built for i mean i ride around with negative three degrees of camber daily and uh she's always ready for a corner but uh next little boat Behind the scenes here, did another oil change today. Just hit 78,000 miles yesterday. Something like 78.20 now, but uh, or no, 79. Sorry, 79, almost to 80,000. But uh, I'm about to do a tire rotation again. Just an oil change again. Um, next week, sometime. I'm gonna. I think I decided because in one of the last videos I said about ordering the carbon hatch, hood, and fenders. Um, but with all the traveling I do, I don't want to ruin that stuff in the front right away because it, it will. It's so many bugs and rock ships and all this shit. Anyway, so I figured I'd get the rear end of the done, rear end of the car done first. And by that I mean getting the hatch and the tubular subframe from Verkline and their control or uh, what are they called? Not control arms, but uh, trailing arms. They make separate trailing arms, but uh. It's gonna be super dope. It's gonna shed a ton of weight in the back. Um, get plexiglass or whatever glass for the for the hatch window. Take all the plastics out. Seat belts are coming out. I might just leave the carpet because my PM4 is on it right now. Unless I feel like anyway. Pretty much the whole back of the car is gonna get gutted, and the tubular subframe I think is like 15 pounds as well. It's all spherical bushings and this and that. So the rear end is gonna be set, then I can get the car corner balanced. And uh, that'll be huge because the car is like way off balance right now, I feel like. So I took out so much weight out of the back and barely anything out of the front. But uh, I mean, seats will help with that, but that's kind of like towards the middle of the car and like the bases are the heavier part. So it's like a lower center of gravity. So it doesn't really matter as much, I don't think, for a corner balance. But I mean, overall, I'm hoping by this event, the car will be under 3,000 pounds and... We already know it's gonna make over 500 horse. I just need to get the tune and go to the dyno. Like I got bears a few at the house now, thanks to Eric. I have a roommate now. Um, he's got this 800 some horsepower Camaro. He's also got this truck that he uses to take these barrels to fill up. So we don't have uh, anything better than 91 where we live. Within like 110 miles, we have nothing but 91. Actually, it's pretty hard to find 91 in town too. It's not hard. I know where it is, but there's only like one spot in town with decent 91. But uh, so we got a barrel of 93 and a barrel of E85. His car runs around on like an E50 mix, and he runs math. But uh, he likes that. You know, the 93 is actually cheaper than the 91 here because this 93 comes from Texas, where gas is a lot cheaper. So we're paying less money 
for better fuel. Now obviously E85 inexpensive either. So we're saving money by actually doing this. And he has stuff going on. He goes up there quite often. So he's able to fill these up at least once a week, if not more. So it's pretty dope. I just gotta, like I said, get the tune and go hop on the dyno. Kind of excited. Well, I'm definitely excited because I want to see that 500, whatever it makes. I think it'll make easily 520. I think it could make like 435 or 535, 540. I think it could. But uh, we'll see how good this PM4 does with the 450 and the 920cc or 925cc injectors. Um, still stock direct injectors, but you know we'll see how far this fuel system can go. I really only want an E60 um, just because ethanol content varies depending on where you go and I don't want to because um, I don't have a per se like the actual handheld ethanol tester to test it before I put it in the car but I do have the P3 gauge hooked up to a sensor that reads it out of the fuel line so I don't want to have to go out and then get shitty E85 and uh, you know my tune's set for E80 and I want to get E60 well that's no fun so I think I'm going to set it for E60, E65, somewhere in there, kind of like the, the mid-range. That way, uh, just in case that situation does happen, it's not terrible. Anyway, I'm going to get back to rotating these tires. See how the tire wear is. I've put quite a few miles on these already. We'll see how they look. Some 200 trick wears. All right, well, the tires actually look pretty good. I run uh, RE71Rs, 245, 4517. Um, tire wear is looking pretty decent. Not upset. 200 tread wear tire, and I'm dailying the shit out of these. Looking pretty good. Happy with that. Uh, for anyone wondering, got the racing line stud kit. I mean, they are getting pretty worn. I don't have um, a special socket for this that's soft or anything, so, I mean, they, and they are aluminum. But, uh, still think they look pretty decent. I thought that they were going to look a lot worse the way people talked about them. But, uh, so far, so great. Waters are holding up great. UCS tuning in the rear, real wood in the front. This pad wear is good. Oh, yeah, I forgot I wanted to go. One. Two, three, four, five. I softened them up for a trip I took over the weekend, but let me stiffen them back up. Everything's looking pretty good, though. A little dusty, a little dirty. Fronts are holding up great. See, my fender liners are nice and worn out. <laughs> Wore a whole, whole hole there. You can't see it now. Oh well. The brakes are doing great though. Shaved a lot of weight with these. And they look great. Stop great. The pads are doing damn good. Got the other sides off. This was the front tire. Looking pretty good. It's been on there for a minute too. So glad to see there. They're looking good. I upped the tire pressures for longer trips. Help save the tire a little bit. This is a 200 tread wear tire. So. These bitches grip though. I really, really, really like these tires. Really like them. Now then a little bit of rust I gotta brush off. Everything looks good back here in the back. And uh, this is the real damage zone of the car. I don't think we'll be able to see where you can see my fender liner is non-existent. It got ripped out at the last autocross. So I need to order a new one. Kind of raise the car a little bit. I don't want to raise the car until I get all the stuff for the back of the car so I can corner balance it and uh, We'll be adjusting coilovers and stuff for that, so I'll save myself an alignment. Fun stuff. Brakes are doing great though. Well, like I said, hopefully we're in that shit next week. I'm literally, after this video, I'm gonna order um, stage two engine mounts from BFI. I already got someone picking up my stage ones. There's that, and along with um, the hatch and the subframe, I need to order the AMS intercooler. Um, soon, unless data comes out on the IEV2, I've been waiting weeks and weeks. I saw a post last night, someone said they just installed theirs, they need to do data logs and stuff, so. But I don't know what intercooler they're coming from, going to the IEV2, so. 
we'll have to see. Still a couple weeks away from ordering that, but uh, hopefully it doesn't take forever for that hatch and subframe subframe to get here. It's going to take me a while to figure out or probably get that glass made, and then I'm out to find a nice long weekend with no racing to get that rear subframe in and then get an alignment. Freaking, I forgot about that. And that whole shebang. Um, I'll bring it up here real quick and I'll drop a link for that and the uh, the Facebook group for the the shootout. I hope to see a lot of you there. If you're watching this and you can make it to Austin in October, please try and do it. I'm trying to make this as big as possible. We're going to try and contact hotels, get discounts. They do, well, I'm not. I mean, I could be involved in it if they asked me to, but um, yeah. Let's just make this awesome. It'd be so cool to have a bunch of MQB cars out there just tearing shit up, having a good time. Um, and of course, for me, I get to record all of this and it's just going to be awesome. So, if you can make it, make it. It's going to be worth your while. Sorry if this looks kind of crappy, but Brookline has all these really nice things. Um, you got subframe inserts, trailing arms, control arms, uh, obviously the subframes, front stuff more bars. There's going to be a bunch of stuff I need to order for the rear, but we're going to get these control arms here with bushings. You can see um, toe links for the rear, the um, wishbone bearing thing. It's like they took this idea from a Porsche. You can see in there what it replaces. Um, talks about how keeping your camber set when on track because the rubber sucks. And then uh, obviously the subframe. So it should shave quite a bit of weight, be hella more rigid, and give me a bunch more um, adjustment points for the suspension in the back. It's going to be dope. Can't wait. And they make these for a bunch of cars. They have like Mark V and six sections as well and other Audi stuff. But yeah, eventually I'll pretty much be buying all this, but I already have these and this from 034 and that from 034. But a lot of stuff it's gonna be awesome anyway that's all I got um, make sure to check the description for the links to these things to the event join the page um, and just dates and venues and stuff could change it's early this idea came up I think like beginning of this week or at the end of the weekend so uh, it's very young it's in a very young stage but the more people we can get involved the more ideas we could have um, and just get shit rolling. It's only really a couple months away. Um, yeah, Hopefully I'll see some of you guys there. Um, more racing coming this weekend. I got all types of videos and stuff. We're backed up. Some stuff I can't show yet. But you'll see. You'll see. Autocross is canceled this weekend because of COVID so that sucks. But uh, we'll get into something. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Questions, comments, concerns, drop them down below, and I'll catch you on the flip phone.